If raising kids is priceless, why does it cost so much? This is the question we're diving into today for the fifth and an eight part masterclass with Meridian Credit Union. In the last class, we talked about decoupling stress from money. And so it's fitting that we're taking a closer look at the costs associated with raising a family, because the last thing you want to be when you're starting a family is stressed. Nancy Taylor, Senior Wealth Advisor at Meridian Credit Union, joins me today to discuss the price tag that comes with kids and how with a little planning, you can avoid some major pitfalls. Welcome back to the show, Nancy. Happy to be back. This is a fun conversation. I mean, we all adore our children. Uh, and I don't think anybody's quite prepared for how expensive they will be, right? So expensive. Um, <laughs> somewhere between ten and fifteen thousand dollars a year till they're eighteen. Wow. Um, you know, that's it, crazy. It is. And at the same time, we're suffering an income loss because we're we're, you know, in the first year we're on that leave, we have a little bit of loss of income and EI will support some of that in maternity leave, but it's really not to what you currently would be making in a normal environment. Yeah. And some families spend $10,000 or more on their baby's first 12 months. So expensive in the first couple of years because it's new and you want the best of everything. And, and you quickly kind of look around you and think, hmm, this isn't cutting it for me anymore. You perhaps want to go to a larger home or a home a bigger space in any regards, whether you're renting or ownership, or you might want to be closer to where your kids are going to eventually go to school. You're searching out schools. And I know this was a big one for my husband and I, when we were driving home from the hospital thinking we need a safer car and a more dependable car. So all these things can be very overwhelming for new parents uh, in the first couple of years. I remember when my children were, were infants, I thought this is so expensive. It's, it's, it's got to get cheaper down the road. And I can tell you as the mother of two teen girls that it never gets cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> Agreed. Teenage boy. <laughs> so let's talk about some of the things we can do then to mitigate, uh, you know, the stress to make things a little easier. Uh, how can we plan for that? It kind of just generalize um, a little bit of a comfortable budget. You have nine months while you're preparing and we, we like to think of all the fun things that go along with that, like the nursery colors and themes, but try to make finance a part of that um, pre preparation. Um, there's so many things that creep up that we don't even think about. Like there's the regular things we think about as new moms and new parents, but there's so many things that can creep up to, um, to challenge that budget. But as long as you have a little bit of a budget and you're understanding what that could look like, I think that gives you a little bit of peace of mind heading into the next couple of years. So um, today I wanted to spend some time around some of those unexpected costs that, that could creep up and um, smack us in the face if we're not ready. Uh, and one of those is you remember in the first year you're, you're sleep deprived and you know everybody else's life seems to be going on and you're kind of your child sleeping a lot and you're not maybe dining out and eating as much as you normally would but we could, we could really fall into our headspace and do a little more online shopping than we're used to. It's um, those knee jerk reactions in the middle of the night when your baby's sleeping or when they're not sleeping at night. The, try not to get online and do too many spontaneous uh, clicks on the computer and try to stick to that general budget that you've maybe prepared in advance. Uh, that's a big one actually and um, more common today probably than ever before with everybody online now. Um, another one is just um, around the unexpected um, things we don't like to think about, um, such as wills and, and uh, life insurance, because you have a dependent now. It's not just about you anymore. It's about your loved ones. And uh, a real responsible thing to do is, is to really take a look at putting a will in place with regards to, um, you know, guardianship of your children, should something happen to you, uh, and life insurance um, for either you or your children. Uh, are, I think, a very responsible step in the right direction. I just want to jump in quickly on that one, because I have to tell you that one, that step, uh, I guess this journey of life, that step of preparing for my children in, in the moment I wasn't around in case I wouldn't be around, mm -hmm. that is a very emotional uh, step to take as a parent. And yes, the costs associated with that, you don't think of that but you'd have to have it all in place so yeah you do want to definitely give that one some thought and what a wonderful feeling like just the peace of mind knowing that that's looked after 
it's, it's astounding. Like 51% of Canadians don't even have a will. 25% think they're too young for a will. As soon as you have net worth, you should have a will. And as soon as you have a dependent, you should absolutely have a will. And I think 18% think that it's too expensive. What are, what are the costs of not having it, right? So it's just a real responsible kind of get hit you in the feels. <laughs> yeah, and yeah, and the, the reality is if you don't take care of it, you're leaving that burden to somebody else to figure yeah. out. So you want to make sure your wishes are, are covered. All right, what else would we have an unexpected cost? I'm sure you have so some- those like extracurricular activities. You know, you want to put your children into so many activities and expose them to everything. And, um, you know, my son had travel hockey, travel soccer, there's dance, gymnastics, all these things. And when we polled Canadians uh, about this, 55% of Canadians said, you know what, this, this was a huge financial burden for me that I wasn't expecting. And uh, 32% of them actually admitted to going into debt to fund these extracurricular activities. So uh, you can't get a head start on everything, but understanding what those costs around the corner look like, not just in the first couple of years of having a child, but once they hit those years where you're going to want to expose them, I think is a real uh, mature way of looking at your budget as well. And then you start getting into those years where you're having birthday parties and, oh my gosh, they're so much different uh, than they were when I was that age. But uh, 20 kids, $20 a pop, uh, $400 boom, right out the door. So understanding what those costs look like. And, and there's always grandparents that are willing to provide cash for things like this. And we can pull those resources together. So it's not always out of pocket for us directly. So, you know, we talk about this a lot, planning, preparation, and, you know, because these expenses do come up. So what are some ways parents can actually prepare for these long-term costs and maybe some of the shorter term unexpected costs that come up? Yeah, good question. So we have the registered education savings program, which is fantastic uh, here in Canada. You get $500 free money every year on the first $2,500 annually that you put into the plan. Um, So that's to a maximum of $7,200 of free money you get for your post education post education for your children. Um, You also, you know, consider this really just part of your budget right out of the gates because it's so hard to play catch up later and you may miss out on a lot of that grant room because you can't play catch up. So, you know, again, when grandparents and I have a lot of my clients that want to fund this for their, for their grandchildren, it's really important to them. Uh, And the program is so flexible. There's really no reason why you wouldn't want to start a program like that. So $2,500 a year is not a huge ask, and especially if you're getting, you know, baby bonus and other things, money from grandparents to help fund that for, for that, for their children's legacy, right? Let's talk about the child can the Canadian child benefit for a second, because I think this, and if you don't need it to pay bills or anything, like, what's the best thing to do with that money? Well, you put it into the education savings plan. Absolutely. And they're so flexible. You can have a family plan if you have more than one child and you can shift the funds according to the needs of the kids, uh, whether it's college or university or a trade school. They're so much more flexible than when they first came out. So, uh, you know, grandparents can contribute, aunts and uncles, birthday money, all kinds of things to help offset the cost for you directly. And then you can also get a bond with the education savings plan. If you have a lower income in your family, you can actually get a step up of a couple thousand dollars in bond money. Um, which is fantastic to help where it's needed. Okay. So obviously if somebody's listening right now and they're thinking, um, boy, oh boy, I am not ready for this. <laughs> what yeah. should they, what the, who can they contact at Meridian? Yeah. Cause the cost of having a child depends on so many different factors and the decision should be made with a financial um, thought process as well. Not just about the non-financial So I encourage everybody to reach out to a financial advisor because what a lot of parents do is they kind of revert all their savings out of their retirement and stop looking at their retirement and both could be um, not a wise decision. So looking after you and your loved ones is really essential. So having a plan in place and a lot of people think they need to have money to approach a financial advisor for this kind of planning. And that's absolutely not the case here at Meridian. So I encourage your listeners to reach out. We're at uh, www.meridiancu.ca and uh, just, you know, come with an open mind and and, uh, it's great information for you to have for you and your family to to protect everybody. All right. Incredible. Thanks so much for joining me today, Nancy. You're welcome. Thanks for having me.